Hello and welcome back once again to Dental Basics. I'm Dr. Parvati Raghavan and today we are going to learn about the ciliary ganglia which is a parasympathetic ganglia. The following are the topics covered. First we are going to learn about the common features of all the parasympathetic ganglia of the head. Significant structures around the ciliary ganglia that are in some way related to it. The course of the parasympathetic root which is motor in function and the other two nerve roots that are sensory and sympathetic. Let us start with the nervous system. In our body we have the central nervous system which is formed by the brain and spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. A single cell of the nervous system has an axon and a cell body. When these cell bodies group together, inside the central nervous system, they are called as nuclei. When they group together outside the central nervous system, that is in the peripheral nervous system, they are called as ganglia. The parasympathetic nervous system consists of fibers that originate in the central nervous system. Those supplying the head and neck are located in the brain stem within four nuclei. This is the brain and brain stem. Brain stem is equal to midbrain plus pons plus medulla. Let us look at the brain stem once again. Midbrain, pons, these are the nuclei of origin of the parasympathetic nerves. After leaving the brain stem, the fibers from each nuclei synapse in a peripheral ganglion, and that is the parasympathetic ganglion. These are located near the target organ and give out parasympathetic fibers that supply the structures in our head. In the bottom of this diagram, you can see the nucleus associated with vagus nerve that is supplying parasympathetic fibers to the thorax and the abdomen. From the ganglia, postganglionic parasympathetic fibers continue to the organ innervating it. Fibers from the ciliary ganglia innervate the eye. So the main function of the ciliary ganglion is to provide parasympathetic innervation to the intraocular muscles of the eye. This is the image of an eye. In the center of the eye is the pupil and around the pupil is the iris. There are muscles that encircle the iris and muscles that radiate from the iris. Those encircling the iris are the ciliary and the sphincter or constrictor pupillae and those that are radiating from the iris are the dilator pupillae. There are four parasympathetic ganglia in the head, ciliary, pterygopalatine, submandibular and otic. They receive fibers from the cranial nerve, number three that is the oculomotor nerve, Two ganglia in the middle are both supplied by the cranial nerve number 7 and 9 that is the glossopharyngeal nerve. These ganglia appear as swellings of different shapes and size. Most of them are associated with some sensory and sympathetic nerves but these nerves that is the sensory and the sympathetic nerve they do not synapse inside the ganglia and merely pass through it. With all this basic background let us get to the ciliary ganglia. There are two ciliary ganglia, one is on the right side and one is on the left side. It is small, 1 to 2 mm in diameter and reddish in color. It contains about 2500 cell body. It is situated in the loose fat near the apex of the orbit. Ciliary ganglia is made of cell bodies of multipolar neuron. The ciliary ganglia lies between the optic nerve, the ophthalmic artery and the lateral rectus muscle. If the cranial vault is cut out horizontally and the brain removed, we can see the base of the skull. On removal of the bone of the anterior cranial fossa, underneath you will be able to see this type of image. This is the optic nerve, ophthalmic artery, ciliary ganglia and the lateral rectus muscle. These branches of the ophthalmic artery just behind the eyeball are called the posterior ciliary arteries. 
In the top of the brain stem is the Edenja Westphal nucleus and this is the nuclei of origin of the parasympathetic nerves that has been named after two different German scientists, Edinger and Westphal. Moving ahead, we have the oculomotor nerve, that is the third cranial nerve. Note that the oculomotor nerve has a different nucleus of origin. Just below it, arising from the bones, is the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve and its ganglion. This is its first branch called the ophthalmic nerve. Below, you can see the internal carotid artery. Superior cervical ganglion and the T1 spinal nerve coming into this ganglion. Going back to the top, you have the ciliary ganglion. In the eye, there are two group of muscles, one encircling the iris and the other one radiating from the iris. Encircling the iris are the ciliary and sphincter or constrictor pupillae muscle. Radiating from the iris are the dilator pupillae muscles. The oculomotor nerve originates from the oculomotor nucleus. Oculomotor nerve divides into two branches, the superior and the inferior branch. Taking a closer look at these branches, all of them branch further and provide supply to muscles. Note that the inferior gives out three branches. One of the branches which supplies the inferior oblique muscle splits and goes into the ciliary ganglia. With all this background, let us know about each of the roots of the ganglia. Parasympathetic root. This we are going to learn in three parts. First, three ganglionic fibers. Two, what happens in the ganglion. And three, the postganglionic fibers. Nerve cell bodies in the edinger westphal nucleus send out their axons. These pass through the oculomotor nerve to its branches supplying the inferior oblique muscle. From this branch, the fibers split off and enter the ciliary ganglia. In the ganglia, there is formation of synaptic junctions. Preganglionic fibers end here and from the cells in the ganglia arise the postganglionic fibers that pass out as short ciliary nerves to the eye. The ciliary ganglia act like a relay station for the parasympathetic nerve fibers. Preganglionic fibers enter the ganglia and postganglionic fibers exit it. This finishes the first root of the ganglia. Moving on. Next, there are two more roots, the sensory root and as the name suggests, it conducts sensations from the periphery to the central nervous system. We also have the sympathetic root which is coming from the internal carotid nerve plexus. Parasympathetic nerves run alongside the sympathetic and tend to oppose and balance the effect of the sympathetic system. First, I'm going to talk about the sympathetic root because it's simple. Starting from the bottom of the image, this is the T1, that is the thoracic spinal nerve. The thoracic spinal nerves branch out from the spinal cord to each side of the spine. This reaches the superior cervical ganglia and forms synapse. You can get more info about this in my video about the ganglia of the head and neck. You can of course see its location here in this image from that video. Now after synapse, postganglionic fibers are given out forming the internal carotid plexus which is situated on the lateral side of the internal carotid artery. A branch from this plexus moves on to the ciliary ganglia and just passes through it. Sensory root conducts sensation from the eye to the central nervous system. Sensory fibers reach the anterior part of the ganglion by means of short ciliary nerves. 
From here, they exit the ganglia posteriorly and join the nasociliary nerve, which in turn joins the ophthalmic nerve. Short ciliary nerves. They contain fibers from all three roots of the ciliary ganglia. You can see in the image the three roots. More than 95% of these nerves supply the ciliary muscles of the eye and the remaining the sphincter pupillae muscles. Both these muscles encircle the iris. These muscles that are ciliary and sphincter pupillae muscles are a part of the accommodative reflex of the eye which is an involuntary response when the visual focus switches from an object at a distance to one closer. These muscles are involuntary since parasympathetic supply is under the control of the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic fibers controlling the two muscles of the eye are motor in function. Short ciliary nerves are 8 to 10 in number. They contain fibers from all the three roots of the ganglia. These are the short ciliary nerves. They further divide into 15 to 20 branches which pierce the sclera around the entrance of the optic nerve. Giving company to the short ciliary nerves are the long ciliary nerves which are just 2 to 3 in number. They are not a part of the ganglia but let us know a little bit about these nerves too. The long ciliary nerves are branches of the nasociliary nerve. They carry sympathetic fibers and sensory fibers. Sympathetic fibers from the superior cervical ganglia to the dilator pupillae muscles of the eye and sensory fibers to the nasociliary nerves from ciliary body, cornea and iris. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe and share and if you want me to make a video on any particular topic, do let me know in the comments.